When we think about street photography cameras, smart light systems like the Fuji X100V, X-Pro3, Sony's A7C, and of course Ricoh GR3 have seen to be dominating scene, and rightfully so. They're small and light, and you could practically take them anywhere. That really got me thinking. There's a small system out there that fits the bill. Of course, it has small bodies, small lenses, and has great image quality. And you're probably wondering, well, Dave, what the heck is it? And that is the Micro Four Thirds system. For the most part, those cameras are available. My name is David Cabra, and today I want to shine the light on Micro Four Thirds systems. I've been shooting them for a year, and as of recently, I've added it to my street photography setup. Am I asking to join the Micro Four Thirds and call? No. I shoot full frame, film, digicam, whatever I can get my grubby little hands, or this might be my conversion. E. So as a heads up, this is going to be a very casual video. So if I miss anything, just let me know. If I got something wrong, just correct me. Just don't be a jerk about it. I'm uh, sensitive. In this video, I'm going to cover what is Micro Four Thirds, the benefits of them, how did I get into it, why do I choose to shoot it, and lastly, my thoughts and opinions. Along the way, I'm going to show you images from three different cameras, and that's just to show you guys what you can do with these cameras. And of course, if you stick around through the end, we could shoot the shit, because why not? Let's talk about the teeny tiny elephant in the room, and that is its sensor size. It's half the size of a full frame, and that's what really pushes people away. Its advantages, it's also its disadvantages. Because of the sensor size, it tends to struggle in low light situations. And another thing is, compared to full frame, you don't get the exact same image compression, or what people like to say, depth of field. Technically, that's not right. I don't really want to get that deep into it, because that's just going to open a can of worms. In general, I think for street photography, you don't really need that crazy shallow depth of field. So I'm not going to worry about it. And if we make a video about equivalence, depth of field and other stuff, um, that's a never ending war anyway. Knowing the limitations of your systems and pushing through them create creativity and innovation. But what is Micro Four Thirds? Micro Four Thirds is a mirrorless, interchangeable lens system introduced by Panasonic and Olympus back in 2008. Just a quick tidbit, Olympus is now OM Systems, but I might use those names interchangeably. What, what am I doing with my hands? I never know. What does Micro Four Thirds stand for? The word micro means mirrorless because of the removal of the pentaprism. Now you have a micro smaller body. So surprisingly, it doesn't have to do with the sensor size. But Four Thirds does actually have to do with the sensor. It stands for the sensor size and aspect ratio of, well, the sensor. And now we're going to talk about Micro Four Thirds benefits in street photography. And we're going to break it down in a few sections. So you have image quality, IBIS, small form factor, lens choice, and lastly, my favorite, price point. That is especially true in the secondhand market. Image quality. Since it's a small sensor, people are like, I can't get a good image. I, I, I can't. I'm just I'm horrible. And that... I will argue, and instead of getting technical, I'm just going to show you some of my favorite Micro Four Thirds photographers. Some people like to argue that you have to nail your exposure with Micro Four Thirds, that you can't underexpose so much. In general, you should try your best to nail your exposure, and I understand there are situations where you want to under or overexpose, but to be honest, I'm not going to do that way too much, maybe one step or two steps, but anything than that, I think that you're just reaching, and you got to do better. No, but in all seriousness, this is all about situation, and knowing your system's limitation also helps out. Another strong point that people don't really mention that is IBIS. Even though a lot of camera systems have IBIS now, OM systems and Panasonics tend to be really gimbal-like. So, in order to combat the issue with ISO, I like to bring down my shutter, and I'm able to get a nice image while I'm hand-holding. So in low light situations, this is a nice alternative, and of course with full frame, all I have to do is crank up my ISO. And then one of my favorite reasonings is form factor, especially the cameras that I use. I use the EM10 Mark III from Olympus, the GX85 from Panasonic, and lastly, my go-to camera nowadays, the Olympus EM5 Mark III. Alongside the benefit of having a small body, I tend to lean on silver bodies, so people think that I'm just either a tourist or just some newbie guy just doing my own thing. I feel more part of the scene rather than being really intrusive, especially when I rock cameras like the R6 with a 24-70. People usually stop me and they're like, what the hell are you doing? Are you working or something? When I have my EM5, people usually just leave me alone. If I want to ask people for portraits, it's a little bit easier. So imagine if you have this big old 85 down your face. That could be a little scary sometimes. When it comes to ergonomics, that's just preference. 
I usually do a half K, so I extend the grip a little bit more. And if you need to, you could lean on chunkier bodies like the OM1 or the GH6. Basically for me, these little guys are fine, especially the way that I grip them. I don't have to have like a crazy grip. Sometimes my peaky just hangs off and I'm just chilling. And let's go to our next reasoning, which is lens choices. If you're primarily a prime shooter like I am, this is a 17mm 1.8, which is a 35mm full frame equivalent, you get a small package, kind of looks like a toy. People are going to say, oh, I used to have this camera or, you know, some, some nostalgic stuff like that, which is pretty hilarious. But if you're a prime shooter like me and you stick to 1.8s, you have focal lengths like 28, 35, and 50. I'm saying full frame, full frame equivalents, my bad. But they tend to be small packages. Once you get to the 1.4s, 1.2s, they tend to be a little bit bigger, but they're not as big as their full frame counterpart. One of my favorite things about setups like these is, honestly, I just put a camera strap and just hit the streets. I take a battery or two, put it in my pocket. I could just do that all day without a problem. And of course you can do that with a full frame camera. This is my Canon RP with a 35 millimeter but that tends to get tricky when you start to introduce zoom lenses. And what extends my small form factor and lens choice reasoning is the availability of getting small compact zoom lenses. This is a 12 to 35 2.8, which is a full frame equivalent of a 24 to 70 2.8. I, I had to think about that one, but the option of having something small is really amazing. And this could be really helpful if you're a shy person or if you're like me, I'm just lazy at times. This is my go-to setup when I hang out with friends. Either they know I'm going to take pictures of them or I'm going to step out and take pictures of the scene. So as an example, if it's a bar night, personally, I'm not much of a drinker. I usually take pictures of the bar or I step out and do some street photography while my boys are just drinking. Of course, some people are going to be like, well, David, that isn't street photography. And well, I'm just going to tell you, there's no rules in the street, motherfucker. So this is my 24 to 70 on my R6. It's uh, adapted because I'm broke. And this is my EM5. So if I'm going out for like planned sessions or I'm working with clients, this isn't a big deal. My street photography sessions can go all the way up to four hours. So that can get a little bit heavy with this, not so much of a big deal. And one more thing about lens options, which leaks over to price is since there's many manufacturers like OM System, Panasonic, Lawa, they all create all these amazing lenses. You're able to get them secondhand at a really decent price. Might as well talk about price. But one of my favorite things is you're able to get a pro level setup for under a grand. So I got the body for 650 and I got this lens for 320. And both of these guys are weather sealed. So when I go to places like Portland or Seattle and I have to worry about rain, it's not that big of an issue. So even though this isn't the tip top of the line or the latest and greatest, the fact that this is weather sealed and I can get some pretty nice photos is a huge plus. One thing that I do want to note, this camera is slightly older than the X100V, I think about four to five months. So even then, this camera still has a lot of life left. And if you're on a tighter budget, this is my EM10 Mark III. I got this camera about last year. This is pretty old. I think it came out around like 2012, 2013, but I got the body for 250 and this lens itself, I got it for hundred bucks. So even then you have a nice little budgeted system. Budgeted, small budget. So how did I get into the Micro Four Thirds system? Oh, well, I have this guy to thank. And you're probably wondering, but this is full frame. And you're gosh darn right. But I had a street photography session in San Francisco and I was carrying it for about three hours. So once I got to the three hour mark, I was just dying. I was just chilling around my shoulder and I got a little bit tired of people like pulling me to the side, asking me what I was doing. So I found this camera store two blocks away from me. They're called Fireside and they're a really cool spot. And there she was, she was just staring at me, my little EM10. At that time, I didn't really know about the sensor size. I just thought it was small and cool. They gave me a little bit more info about it. Now that I go into more rainier places, I wanted to upgrade my body and that's how I got my EM5. So why do I choose to shoot Micro Four Thirds? Honestly, it just gets me out of the house. I love the way my camera looks. I love the image quality that I get from it. So that's just the, that's it, that's just it. I have fun shooting with it and that's the main reason why I do so. We're at the tail end of the video. So now I'm just gonna shoot the shit with you guys. I see videos that say, I'm leaving Lumix, I'm leaving Olympus, is Micro Four Thirds dead? And to be honest, I think that system will never die because there's always gonna be little gremlins who just love that system. Besides me, I feel like there is a huge cult following and so I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon unless um, shit hits the fan. I think Micro Four Thirds isn't as big as it should be is because Panasonic OM systems tend to move really slow. So when they had the opportunities to swing for the fences, um, I think they missed their mark. 
which is very unfortunate because I feel like more people could benefit from a system like this. Now that I made a video on Micro Four Thirds, does this mean I'm going to stop talking about the R7 and doing gear reviews? No, I'm actually using the R7 right now. This is the R7 with a 24 to 105 F4, so maybe I'll make a video on that. Thank you guys for watching this video, and if you guys haven't liked it already, go ahead and do so. Sub if you haven't, and I'll uh, catch you guys next time. Bye!